Phys 2320 Computing 2 and this is the second video in the Working with Files strand. So in the first video um, I reviewed the use of open to access a file um, and introduced the use of the with statement as a better way of making sure that you actually close the file uh, when you finish doing with it. Um, you demonstrated the use of for loops that you could iterate over the file. Um, so if you open it as a binary file you read it byte by byte. If you open it as a text file you read it line by line. Um, used the um, couple of tests to see whether something is in line. So you can either do um, some string in line or line dot starts with some string to test whether um, that string is either in the line or it's the start of the line. Um, there's also a line dot ends with, um, obviously for testing whether a line ends with a certain string. Um, demonstrate the use of uh, line dot strip, uh, which gets rid of white space characters at the start and the end of the line, which removes end of line characters. Um, and also the use of line dot split with some uh, delimiter to split lines into different values um, to get us a list from one single string of separate values. Okay, so this time um, I'm going to be talking more about reading comma separated value files. So um, files where you've got data uh, where each row has a series of values which are separated by commas. Okay, so um, this is actually quite a common example of, of any of a whole range of delimited files. So it's very common in physics to have your data in a, some kind of tabular form. So you have um, rows of data which get written to disk as a single line and columns of data which are then um, stored in the line as being separated by some character such as a comma or a tab or maybe a space. Um, so then you have a slight problem of course that um, some values you might have in your data might include the character you're using to separate the columns out. So if for example you use a comma as your um, column delimiter then if you have a value which includes a comma in it you have to have some kind of way of quoting the value to say ignore the comma in here. And this is one of the reasons why you can't just simply go and use line.split if you think your data might end up with the um, delimiter inside a value because it'll then missplit the values up. Um, so to go and process these sorts of files today we're going to make use of the CSV uh, library module. So that's comma separated values library module. So Python actually has a whole bunch of support built in that comes with it that um, uh, is designed to help you process uh, comma separated value or other delimited files. Okay so we're going to go over to our spider. So this is the code we had uh, at the end of the last video just again to go over to show you the use of the with statement um, and then um, reading in lines uh, from the file. I'm using enumerate in my for loop so I get a line number as well as the actual line. There I'm testing for a, a hash character in a line to just skip over it. There we've got the, the strip and the split being used to produce separate columns of lines but as I just said that's fine unless your data file actually has column actually has commas in the data itself um, and then converting the individual values into floating point numbers um, and eventually printing it out and going round. Okay so the data file we've been working with looks a bit like this so we have a, a row which is uh, a header and then we have a row of title headings and then we have a row of numbers. So here's the code we're going to work with. Um, so first of all I'll just point out I'm using the OS module which is handy because it's all kinds of things for changing directory and working out what directory you're in and renaming files and moving files and deleting files and all that sort of thing. Um, so I'm just going to um, change directory to one where my data file is stored. And I'm also going to import the CSV module which is the one we're going to work with. So we start off as we were before, so with uh, open, opening the data file for reading and giving it the Python variable data. Um, but now we're going to start doing something different. So rather than um, 
just doing what we were doing before and doing for line in data. I'm going to change that and instead I'm going to do for row in csv.reader. So I'm pulling in the reader uh, function from the CSV module. Um, and if I bring up the help for that, oh, let's go and give it a bracket. There we go. So here's the help. You'll see all it takes it takes an iterable. So that's something that you can iterate over. Um, and then an optional parameter dialect, um, which defaults to the value Excel. Um, so that's all to do with um, what separates values, how do you quote values, um, uh, do you quote with single strings? Uh, single quotes, double quotes, or, or what. Um, so for this purposes, all we need to go and do is just go and give it data. So data, because it's a file, is something you can iterate over. So in other words, an iterable is something I can put in a for loop. Um, so there we go. And to start with, we'll do the very simplest thing. We'll just simply print whatever that row was so we can see what it's doing. Okay, so there we go. And we can run that and you can see what it produces then is a list which contains just one element for the first thing because the title row didn't have any commas in it and then the next thing it produces is a list of x data y data z data and after that it then produces lists of numbers and if you look at our data file that is exactly what we have there but it's just nicely separated things up with commas so just to demonstrate it does handle Data, commas in the values. If I make a quoted string there, <coughs> and change that to y comma data, save it. If we go back here, then you see uh, in this row here where it read the data, yeah, it correctly worked out that the second value actually has a comma in it. So that's why CSV is a lot better than just doing it yourself, because you don't have to worry about um, uh, whether you want commas inside your values or not. OK, um, we do have, we probably would like to skip over this line, however. So let's just go and skip over that by simply doing data.next. So that just causes it to read the next line from the data file. So now when we run that, you get the first row is your x data, your y data, and so on. Um, we could um, uh, also go and read the, the separate first row separately. So I could do um, reader equals CSV dot reader data. And I could do titles equals reader dot next. And then down here, We've already got our reader running. So there we go. And we can run that. Whoops. more like it. Okay, sorry, made a slight error there. So titles equals reader.next, and next is a function call, and then we're going to run through everything else and read it in one line by line. So when we run that, <coughs> you see it's now printing each row separately, the number of numeric bits there, and at the end we're printing the titles out because we've pulled them out separately. Okay, so that's reasonably powerful. The um, last thing we might want to go and do is do that conversion of numbers to floating point numbers. So just as before, I can do that something like this using this list comprehension that I've covered in um, uh, syntax 5. Oops, it doesn't like something. What have I done? Oh yes, row equals. There we go. OK, that's better. So that's now just converting the numeric parts to floating point numbers. When we run that, we see now that it's giving us a list of floating point numbers, one after the other, and then it's giving us the titles of strings. So in fact, that's doing exactly what that lot of code was doing. 
Um, except this lot of code, if we go back and run this again, falls over because you see it's messed up reading our titles because our title had a comma in it. So um, the new code we've got with the CSV, as well as being a bit shorter, bearing in mind that that's there, you say 13 lines, and now I've replaced with that's what seven lines so it's a bit more compact it's a bit easier to work with um, and it does more things as well while we're about it okay so that's sort of fine and it sort of works um, if all your data has got just numbers um, sometimes however you might want to go and look at a data file where not everything's in numbers it might be mixed columns of records so let's go and change this to have um, name so we might have Fred Mary George um, Liz and Sam One more, um, I don't know, uh, Jane. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so this is a, an example maybe of a different type of data where you've got mixed records of numbers and floating point numbers. So what you might want to say here is rather than thinking of this as just um, tabular data which is um, accessed by a row and a column, it's more like it's a, each row is a kind of a record, it's about one thing. So maybe a more natural way of thinking about this is to store this as a dictionary or as a list of dictionaries. So what I'd like to do is create a dictionary where I have a key name, which is a value of Fred, a key X data, which is a value of zero, a key Y comma data, which is a value um, 1.0, and a key Z data with a value two. So this again is actually really quite straightforward to go and do with CSV. So we're gonna change our, our code a little bit. Um, so we're going to keep this bit. Um, this is going to be the um, thing that's going to skip over that first line. And then we're going to um, want to go and read the we want to go and read a list of the column headers. So that bit's a bit sim similar. Um, so in fact we can keep it like that. That's all fine. And now we're going to go and change things and we're going to um, read each row as a dictionary. So I can do that using oops, CSV dict reader and telling it again that we're reading it from a, a file or an iterable, so that's our data. And now I need to tell it what the field names are. And that's simply the titles. So field names is a keyword argument and I'm getting it from the titles that we've got from having read that first row. Um, and in fact, you can make this even more compact if you want to. So now um, I'm not gonna go and convert the rows to floating point numbers because not each row is. And we'll just see what we get as we go through each row and I'm not going to print out the titles either. Okay so if I run that there we go. And you see what it's produced is uh, each row is being turned into a dictionary which has the keys. Now remember that with dictionaries the order in which the keys appear does not mean anything particular and here you can see a good example of this is put the y comma data as the first field then the x data and then the name and then the z data um, rather than keeping it in the same order we had it. But that doesn't matter because I can always access each thing by its key so for example I can get at the row by its name like that so I can see that the last one the name was Jane and I can index into all of the, the values by, by name. Okay so that's um, 
showing a nice little way of generating, instead of generating a list of lists, you can generate a list of, of dictionaries or a, a row of a set of dictionaries and work with each um, each dictionary in turn. And actually, this is in fact how I go and process some values of data that we get from um, managing teaching. So I can download from the portal lists of students attached to each module um, and fly through it and um, interpret um, the data as a series of columns and, and, and rows. And in fact, I think that's one of the things I've set as a lab for you to go and look at, um, probably lab three, I think, or lab three or lab four, maybe lab four. Um, I said I could just tidy this code up to make it slightly fewer lines. Um, so if you want to get it down to the ultimately few lines, we remove that, and instead what we do is stick that all in one little go like that. So now what I'm doing is I'm saying, um, so I've got the data.next to skip over that first row. Um, I'm now doing though um, CSV dict reader. I'm creating that. I'm saying it's reading data. I'm saying that your field names, however, you get from creating a CSV reader and reading the first from data and reading the first row. Um, and that's all the, the next row it comes to. So, in fact, what happens before it starts reading the subsequent dictionaries, it reads the very first row. So, there we get it down to um, a grand total of four lines to read that file out as a series of dictionaries. Um, it's maybe not quite as readable as it could be by doing that slightly long line there, but it's not bad. Okay, so that's a, a nice easy way then of processing data files using CSV. And you can do a whole bunch of things really quite powerfully. There's also a um, CSV writer and a CSV dict writer, which will do the inverse operations and will let you generate CSV files um, for later processing um, and you can get at that. The documentation for CSV is all available online um, and it's fairly straightforward to use. Okay, so in summary um, I've shown you the CSV module and why it's useful reading um, delimited files, both comma separated but also tab or space. Um, there are options you can specify how the file should be delimited. Um, basically you can read each row either as a list or as a dictionary. Um, and um, actually turns out it's not limited to files. It can be anything you like um, that you can iterate over. So anything that can be in a for loop can be fed into CSV. Um, but um, it's not necessarily the tool you want to use because if you need to convert, you still need to convert the numbers from strings to floats manually. So if what you're dealing with um, is just simply lots of numerical data in columns, then there are in fact better tools that will let you go and do that. And that's what we'll be showing you in the next video.